have a, a long history with Power Rangers, and uh, you recently came back. Can you talk about returning to the fray? <clears throat> um, yeah, you know, I, was, I, I started the show on the pilot, which was 22 years ago, and, or more, actually. And I was the production manager at that time, so I was doing the nuts and bolts of the show. I was driving the trucks and, and hiring and firing the crew and hiring equipment and finding locations, all that stuff. I had nothing to do with the creative side. Eventually, I started to write the scripts and, um, and, and start to direct. Be, I was story editor for a couple seasons. Um, and then, at that point, I was really heavily involved in the creative side. So I went from nuts and bolts to creative. But this show is the first time, Dino Charge, is the first time that I actually got to, from top to bottom, kind of be in charge of all the creative elements as well as the production. I oversee both departments now. And, you know, everybody thinks that uh, if they could be anything, they'd be the, the Red Ranger or the Pink Ranger. But the secret is that the coolest job on the set is actually my job because, because I get to do whatever I want. I, get to, I can write an episode. I can direct an episode if I want to. Um, I don't really, I have no aspirations to start an episode, but I guess I could. No, actually I couldn't, it'd be awful. But, um, you know, I can write, I can direct, I can, I can be in the editing suite, I could, I could be talking to the composer, I can do whatever I want. And, and when I write, I can come up with any kind of a story I want. I mean, it's, I really do have, I have the best job. It's a little freeing also, uh, having done all the different you know jobs that you have over the years, um, does it feel like it's easier to step into this role now, having done everything along the way, or do you think you could have, or would you take a different approach, knowing in the end you would be at the position you're at now? No, I'm really glad that I took this approach because when you start off as a production manager, you're aware of what things cost, of what's really feasible to be able to do. So when you now, when I write a script. I don't write something that is um, impossible. Now I write some things that are really difficult, but I don't write things that are impossible because uh, I just know that if I ask the crew to do it, they might bend over backwards trying, but it's gonna break the budget. Uh, at the same time, I don't wanna write a script that's too simple. You know, I don't want everybody walking and talking all the time and then suddenly fighting. I wanna, I wanna balance things between you know, the visual effects and, the, and fancy locations and bringing in day players to, to enrich the stories. And having had a past as a production manager allows me to kind of appreciate what I can do, what I can balance while um, not overburdening the crew or the budget. Awesome. Well, with Dino Charge, obviously you're, you're going back to the roots with the dinosaur theme. Um, how does it feel for you being able to sort of go back and maybe tie back a little bit to that legacy? Well, you see, now, remember, I was only the production manager when it, we did the original um, Dinosaurs in Mitomorphin. And so I really, you know, I'd read the scripts and I mostly read them for like how many locations and what kind of camera gear we needed and what extra crew we needed. It wasn't really about the theme. Um, so, and then of course, we, then in Dino Thunder, I wasn't around for that one. So this is really my first dinosaur season. And it's actually kind of a cool thing that you can, your first full season to be in charge is a dinosaur season because I love dinosaurs. It's a very unifying theme, you know, that the weapons have a dinosaur element, all the zords have a dinosaur element, and it's, it's very unified, and so it makes it simpler as a writer to be able to explain how things happen when there's a common theme. If things are very crazy and, and, and all over the board, it's much more difficult as a writer to tie it all together thematically. So I got really fortunate that the first one I'm in charge of is actually Dino Charge. Now, typically we get five rangers, six added. You said you know something about ease of, of being a writer. You're going to have ten rangers at some point by the end of the series. Is that correct? Um, yes, that's true. And so you're right. So even though dinosaurs, for instance, makes it a, a more wonderful theme for me, the ten rangers makes it a real challenge. And uh, I, I can't imagine whose crazy idea it was to have ten rangers in there. But you know what? It's the way it is. And so we look... Uh, one thing about Power Rangers is, you know, the footage is simply something that you have. And you can either see it as a limitation, which it kind of is from a certain perspective, or you can see it as, wow, you know, a lot of the work's done for me. This has been figured out. It's like if someone said, write a song, and you'll say, well, what's the song about? And I give, if I give you, just say write a song, it's difficult. If I give you the first few bars, suddenly you have something to go off of, and you can, you can make up a song a lot easier. And it's the same thing here. The Japanese are brilliant at this. They come up with the various elements they come up with the cre with a lot of the of, you know the villains for instance mm -hmm. and they hand them over to me and now i can take some and leave some depending on how they work into the footage but it's you know it, it's does i don't have to create everything out of whole cloth the japanese have already done that and and they fit together for them so somehow they can fit together for me sometimes i take a few of their little ideas sometimes um, i don't take any of them it's it 
it's really for me to kind of choose, pick and choose which one work best for our season and use those and the rest of my kind of just leave behind. Is there anything that you were disappointed that you had to leave on the cutting room floor from the previous Japanese footage? Um, Japanese footage, you know, this season we didn't have a lot of footage. And what happens is, okay, it's, it's, it's a more complicated question than you think. <laughs> what we start off with is we start off with a script that we believe will be the correct length, which is like 21 and a half minutes. So we, we time it and we do all kinds of fi things to figure out if it'll be 21 and a half minutes. And that includes the Japanese footage, which varies per episode, of course. So after we do, um, we do the rough cut, and then the director comes in and he does a director's cut, and we're always a little bit long, somewhere between two minutes and five minutes long. Um, some episodes turn out to be even longer. So what you do is then I go in and I do the producer's cut, and I have to start to whittle down the story. Now, some of it is a blessing because I'm tightening the story, and I'm making it even better. So the moments that you think the audience might be bored, you know, you're tightening that stuff up, and it can really help the episode. But... If, there's, if the episode's too long, if you're talking like five or seven minutes long, now you got to start cutting chunks, not just lines. And so you have to pull out whole scenes sometimes. So I don't, we um, we'll often kind of start with trimming out the Japanese footage because sometimes we can lose that without hurting the story itself. And then we have to start, after we cut some of the footage, then we have to cut down the story. And I, what I, what I call it is we want to get to the point where it's a good story, but we don't want to make it bleed. Because once you start to cut beyond you know, what, what will still work as far as a, a complete arc, now you're making the story bleed. And luckily we've did all 44 episodes this season, or these two seasons, um, without any having anything bleed. So we had some long episodes, but we were able to trim them down so that all of them are just really tight, really good stories this time. And it's, it's not hard. But as far as stuff that we had to leave on the cutting room floor, sometimes uh, some Japanese footage goes on there that I, I just think, ah, oh, they had great effects or great, great stunts, and I didn't want to lose it. Not very often, but more often there's like a complete scene that maybe we shot for our episode that I just have to cut out because, yeah, it was funny or something, but it didn't progress the story. And if you, when you get down to it, if you have time for something that's funny, you keep it. But as soon as the story, if you, if you have to either give up story or give up something that's funny, you want to give up funny. You want to keep the story. Well, we just spoke with the cast. They're a very energetic uh, and comedic group. Uh, is there anything in particular that surprised you during the, the writing process, or did you t uh, lean back uh, in a different direction after having interacted with them as much as you guys have? Well, you know, after we cast them, um, we, we did a lot of callbacks, and we were very thorough um, this time to make sure that these guys could, because we had some very challenging parts, a lot of which you haven't even seen yet. Um, but, you know, we had them come in one day and do an audition with 30 or 40 other um, candidates who had been called back to, like, the fifth callback or something. And they, we brought them in, and we mixed and matched on the couch, and they all wore colored teen shirts to pretend which ranger they might be. We wanted to see how they looked together, how they, how they interacted, if there was a chemistry. And that, that one audition for all these, all these people took about 10 hours. I mean, it was a whole day. And they started off as complete strangers sitting next to each other in chairs, you know, like this. And at the end of the day, everybody was friends. It was, it was really fantastic. And I, and I heard from a lot of them that, you know, it was like the best audition they ever had because it was so enjoyable. And by the end, people are giving their best performances in the audition because they aren't nervous anymore. They've been there all day long. They come in, you know, we're on a first name basis. It's our goal as, a, as producers to, we would love to have five people walk in, give them all a part, and we could all go home. So we want them to do the best that they possibly can. So they come in, we get to know them, we know their strengths, we know their weaknesses, we work on things to see what their true abilities are, and then we choose the cast. Once the cast is chosen, then we get to know them even better when we say, you know, what can you do physically? What can you do, you know, what, what talents do you have? For instance, can you sing? Can you dance? Um, for instance, Yoshi uh, from our season had, you know, some really great martial arts abilities. Um, Brennan has some really great physical abilities. So we, we use those to try to heighten and make, make our um, episodes even better because why not, right? You don't have, if I want, for instance, somebody to be a skateboarder, why would I hire somebody who have to teach them for two years to be a skateboarder? If, I can, if, if this kid already knows how to do flips and stuff, then let's try to utilize that. And we can do it without, when they're not in their ranger mode, when they're civilians, it makes it even better, right? It makes the stories even more realistic. So we do, we do make some effort to try to incorporate the stuff that they already know as actors. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't with the characters we've developed. But in general, um, it's always useful to have uh, a character or an actor who has a broad ability of different um, things he can do and bring to the screen. Well, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it, and we're really excited to see what the, the rest of the season and the next season uh, you know, has in store for, for viewers. I'll so. tell you a small story. Okay. So 
when I when we first got to New Zealand, um, I was sitting in my office and I got I got a call saying that the Rangers wanted to meet with me. They had some request, and of course, as a producer, you're like, oh no, the cast they want something already. So they all came in and they said, well, we just wanted to meet quickly because we we were all thinking we, there's something that we we would like to ask of you, and uh, and I and I just went, okay, guys, I'm really busy, but what is it? And they said, well, we want this to be the best season of all 22 seasons that have ever happened. So please let us know what we can do. And, it, and they just decided, you know, on their own. They came to me and they told me, this is going to be it. This is going to be the best season. And it put a lot of pressure on me, like, oh, gosh, you know, because because it doesn't matter what they decide. If, if, the, if the scripts are terrible, then they can have they can have Oscar, you know, award-winning performances, right? But if the scripts suck, then it doesn't matter what they do. So, um, you know, luckily, though, I had a couple of talented people I was working with in New Zealand, and we... And I don't know how we do it, but every we shoot three episodes in two weeks. So every two weeks we have to come up with three more episodes, yeah. and somehow we did it. And and I think that your audience, I really hope that you guys, not only do you love the first eight episodes, and everybody has liked them a lot, and I really appreciate that. But after this, um, we have a few episodes coming in, in in the next 36 or so that we have left, that I think are going to be out of the seven or eight hundred episodes we've done, they're going to be some of the best episodes that have ever been done in the franchise. And it's a, it's a tall order because we've done some good episodes through the years. But we did some really ambitious things that I've never done before, and we have some characters that I've never seen before. And that's saying a lot after all these seasons, right? So anyway, so keep the feedback coming, keep the keep the constructive criticism, and because we read it, we care about it, and I want to see what everybody thinks of this stuff that uh, it's coming up. It's going to be very exciting for me to see how everybody reacts. Well, we're excited to have the opportunity opportunity to see what's coming up. So thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Stay tuned for more Power Rangers coverage at Comics Online.